Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about slopes and how they relate to our motion graphs. So, we're going to start with this example, and uh, I took this off of the worksheet entitled Slopes and Areas. So this is example E on that page. And the general idea is that if we take the slope of a particular motion graph, it will tell us the value of the next graph down. So what I mean by that is if you take your position, your x graph, and if you take the slope of that, the slope of the x versus t graph is the value of the velocity. Or in other words, the v versus t graph. So here's what I mean by that. And now we're talking about the instantaneous. Those of you in calc will recognize that what we're doing is called something else. We'll come back to that. So if we look at the slope of the first graph at a particular value of time, the slope only has one value. It looks kind of like that. And I'm just going to eyeball that looks like it's a little bit less than negative one. So on my velocity graph, if this is positive one and this is negative one, my axis will continue downwards. My slope at this point has a value of negative one. So once again, what we've done is we've plotted the value of the slope on the velocity graph. And to reinforce this, what's the definition of velocity? Well, it's a change in uh, position, so in other words, displacement, d over time. And in this graph, we can write it as x. Now, if you think about this, what's delta x over delta t? Delta x over delta t is the slope of this graph. So then we continue on to the next point. So let's call that maybe two seconds, doesn't matter. And we look at the slope of that graph. It's still negative. Is it the same amount of negative? Probably not. It's probably a little bit less negative. So we can put it maybe there. Then we go on to the next point. That's even less negative. We go on to, let's skip to the end, and that is almost a slope of zero. So by the end, we're almost on the axis because that's a value of zero. And so if I sort of connect these dots with a smooth curve, it kind of does one of those. So that's my velocity as a function of time. Okay, so let's just pause and look at what we've done. Make sure that you understand this before you continue. All right, so now let's take this one step further. If the slope of the position, or the x versus t graph, is the value of the velocity graph, then what do you suppose is the slope of the velocity versus time graph? You guessed it. The slope of the velocity versus time graph is the value of the acceleration. And again, we can see this because acceleration is defined as a change in velocity over a change in time, and that is the slope of the velocity graph. So let's go to the same points, and now I'm going to be taking the slope of the velocity graph. So at this first point right here, what's that slope? Well, it's positive, but it's not super huge, so maybe it has a value of plus 1 or plus 0.5, but it has a value which is positive. And I'm just going to draw a little dotted line to remind you that 
everything above that dotted line is the V graph and, and uh, so everything in blue is actually the velocity. And then we go on to the next point. Well, what's that slope? Probably not quite as much. So there's our point. Then the next one, not quite as much. And then the last point has a slope almost of zero. So we're at there. And I skipped a point, but you would do a lot of points for this. And if I connect all of those with a smooth curve, it looks kind of like that. And I missed a little bit because I can't draw, but you get the idea. So once again, if we take the slope of the velocity graph, it tells us the value of the acceleration graph. Okay, now, for those of you in calculus, can you guess what we've just done? For those of you who aren't in calculus, we would call this the derivative. So the derivative is kind of like the slope at one specific point of a graph. And if you're not in calculus or even in trig, don't worry about it. This is just something kind of fun. But now you know how to analyze graphs and to get from a graph of position to velocity, you take the slope. And to get from velocity to acceleration, again, you take the slope. I'll be doing a similar graph for area.